In this video tutorial, I will be looking at 7.6 Proving Trigonometric Identities. 7.6 represents Chapter 7, Section 6 of the Pearson A-Level Maths, Pure Maths Year 2 textbook. Now, before we start Question 1 and Question 2, I've got some beautiful identities up on the board. Each of these identities are covered in my previous video tutorials, so please check them out in order to understand what we are going to do today. So, Question 1 and question two are both prove that questions involving trigonometric identities. Let's start off with question number one. Prove that sine b of a sine a minus cos b of a cos a is equivalent to two cosec two a sine in bracket b minus a. The way we do the proof is to start off from the left hand side, work our way through until we get the right hand side or vice versa. In this case, I'm going to start off with the left hand side. So LHS in short. Now what I need to do is subtract these two fractions. So I'm going to multiply the first fraction by cos A, top and bottom, and the second fraction by sine A, top and bottom. If I do that, I obtain a single fraction, and my single fraction will be the following. Okay, now I say to myself, well, how can I simplify this further? In the numerator, I can see the sine addition formula expanded, and in the denominator, I can see the double angle formula for sine. So, what I'm going to do first of all is simplify the numerator. And if I simplify the numerator, I obtain the following sine in bracket b minus a all over sine a cos a. Now, what I can do over here is multiply top and bottom of this fraction by 2. That will give me 2 sine a cos a in the denominator, but I know that 2 sine a cos a is just equivalent to sine 2a. So my next step is to multiply top and bottom by 2. Okay, so if I do that, I obtain 2 sine in bracket b minus a all over 2 sine a cos a. I know that 2 sine a cos a is just sine 2a, so I can write that in the denominator. Now I can split this particular fraction into two parts and I can write the following. 2 over sine 2a multiplied by sine in bracket b minus a. Now we know that 2 over sine 2a is just 2 cosec 2a. Okay, so I can write 2 cosec 2a multiplied by sine in bracket b minus a which is precisely the right hand side ladies and gents i can finish off the question by drawing a little box over here which means end of proof let's have a look at question two now it says prove that sec squared theta all over one minus tan squared theta is identical to sec two theta now for this particular proof i'm going to start off from the left hand side so lhs in short equal to sec squared theta all over 1 minus tan squared theta. Now, what I'm going to do is replace the sec squared theta with 1 over cos squared theta and the tan squared theta with sine squared theta over cos squared theta. So if I do that, I obtain the following. Okay. Well, what I can do is simplify the denominator now. I know that 1 is the same as 1 over 1. So I can multiply top and bottom by cos squared theta. And if I do that, I obtain the following fraction. 1 over cos squared theta in bracket all over cos squared theta minus sine squared theta all over cos squared theta. Now I'm going to rewrite this fraction as follows. 
1 over cos squared theta divided by, the fraction can be replaced with divide, cos squared theta minus sine squared theta all over cos squared theta. Okay, so now you can divide these fractions using the KCF method. Keep, change, flip. So the first fraction, I keep it as it is, 1 over cos squared theta. I change the division into multiplication, and I flip the second fraction to give me cos squared theta all over cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Now the cos squared theta will cancel out to give me 1 over cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. But I know that cos squared theta minus sine squared theta is just cos 2 theta. So I can write 1 over cos 2 theta. But 1 over cos 2 theta is just sec 2 theta, which is precisely the right hand side. I can end the question by drawing a little box which means end of proof. Moving on to question number 3. Show that cos to the power of 4 theta is equal 3 over 8 plus 1 over 2 cos 2 theta plus 1 over 8 cos 4 theta for any theta. Now, I'm going to use a clever method and start off from the left hand side. Observe this very carefully ladies and gents, I want you to take away this method from this video tutorial today. So starting from the left hand side, I can actually rewrite cos to the power of 4 theta as cos squared theta in bracket squared. Now, what I can do next is use the double angle formula for cos, but the one that I will be using is the one that is in terms of cos only. Okay, so that is cos 2 theta equal to 2 cos squared theta minus 1. This is the one that I'm going to be using. Now, if I make cos squared theta the subject, I obtain the following result. Cos 2 theta plus 1 all over 2. So I'm going to replace the cos squared theta with cos 2 theta plus 1 all over 2. And if I do that, I obtain the following. Right, I can apply the power 2 to the numerator and denominator, which gives me cos 2 theta plus 1 in bracket squared all over 2 squared, which is 4. Now, my next target is to expand the numerator. If I expand the numerator, I obtain the following. Right, what I can do now is take out a factor of 1 over 4. And then go back to the statement that I'm trying to achieve. Okay, if I go back to the statement, I need a cos 2 theta and a cos 4 theta. I've got a cos 2 theta. What I need to do is put, well, do something in order to obtain a cos 4 theta in this particular expression. Well, I can actually eliminate the cos squared 2 theta, ladies and gents, by using the double angle formula for cos. Now, I want to work out what cos 4 theta is using the double angle formula. Well, to work out what cos 4 theta is, I know that it will be of the form 2 cos squared minus 1 if I want the form that has a cos only, and the angle will just be a half of 4 theta, so it will be 2 theta. Okay, so what I can do over here is make cos squared 2 theta the subject. And if I make cos squared 2 theta the subject, I obtain cos 4 theta plus 1 all over 2. So I can replace the cos squared 2 theta with cos 4 theta plus 1 all over 2. I'm going to do that as my next step. Okay, square bracket cos 4 theta plus 1 all over 2 plus 2 cos 2 theta plus 1. Okay, all I need to do is actually simplify the inside of the square bracket, multiply everything by 1 over 4, and I should end up with this result over here. So I'm going to do that. Get 1 over 4 in brackets, a half cos 4 theta plus 1 over 2 plus 2 cos 2 theta plus 1. Okay, Simplifying what we have inside the bracket gives me the following result. 3 over 2, okay, 3 over 2 plus 
2 cos 2 theta plus a half cos 4 theta. Now expanding the bracket with 1 over 4 gives me 3 over 8 plus a half cos 2 theta plus 1 over 8 cos 4 theta. Okay, so I go back to my statement over here on the right hand side, compare it, let's see. Okay, I do end up with this particular result. Hence, I've got the right hand side and I can finish off my solution with a little box and of proof.